longtime Rainmakers friend Scott Jackson from Global Impact is with us. Scott, welcome. Thank you. So even though you're in Washington, D.C., you're kind of back home here at the Global Washington Conference. Absolutely. This is home for many reasons, but one of them is such a fantastic community that's focused on international development. And Global Impact itself, you, you've been in global development for years, but Global Impact is something that actually is focused on the U.S., but now you're reaching out? Yeah, our, our, our mission is really about growing global philanthropy for international causes, and we still raise the majority of funds here in the U.S., but we also raise funds globally. And uh, our uh, originally, we were uh, what we would call a workplace giving federation, um, and supported Save the Children, Care, World Vision, PATH. We still do that work, but more broadly, we really design campaigns, manage campaigns, and then provide some of the financial technology tools for them. Do you have a philanthropic focus? Yes, completely, yeah. We're all about raising funds uh, for philanthropy, although you know, increasingly private philanthropy includes impact funds, includes social enterprises, uh, includes business unit commitments uh, by the private sector. So philanthropy for us is more broadly about uh, private resources for development. So when do charities come to you and say, you know, Scott, can your team help us? Or do businesses come to you and say, can you help us? Or what, what happens? Yeah, it works both ways. So uh, this fall we supported uh, eight international NGOs, including International Rescue Committee, World Vision, SAVE, for an East Africa fund. And they asked us to be the, the backbone. And we then worked with uh, those eight organizations and Facebook uh, and Google and Pepsi raised about five million dollars for the East Africa. Oh. Uh, so that could, you know that was the NGOs coming to us. On the other hand, corporations will come and ask us uh, to help them design a CSR strategy or include their international offices in, a, in an initiative. And you're based right outside of Washington D.C. We are. Yeah. One of the um, one of the focal points that a lot of people see when they look at global philanthropies, they see Africa. But you actually do work in many different places just besides Africa. Yeah, the funds we raise and the organizations that uh, are then on the on the front lines are in over 200 countries. Wow. Yeah. 200 countries, so you're all over the place. All over the place, yeah. Um, so the conference here is based on leadership. And I'm what I'm hearing out of you is global leadership right now. What is leadership? How does that take place? I mean, basically, how do you make things happen in such a difficult leadership climate? Yes. Well, I, th I think of uh, leadership and our whole sector, global development, in kind of uh, three slices. First of all, I think each of us have to remember that our own personal stories are important and connect those stories to the work we do, the organizations we support, and realize that every day as we live our story, uh, we have a chance to lead others and to show others how to, to be a part of a global community. I think that's one you know very immediate, tangible thing we can do as leaders. Mm -hmm. The second is really to continue to engage in key organizations and causes and make sure that we're amplifying their voice. Uh, but the third is really working as a collaborative, really you know being willing to not worry about the credit and be more interested in coalitions, uh, even uncommon coalitions particularly during uncertain times. You know, the Global Washington organization itself is so interesting and the, the people who are here at the conference are so diverse, so varied in all of the things that they do. What's the message that you bring from Global Impact to Global Washington? Well, first of all, I think that uh, a lot of hard work, but now you really have shown the largest regional concentration of multi-stakeholders for global development in the country. And so that's really powerful because it says to other regions in the United States that uh, this is important and that they have a model to look at. Secondly is I think it's a powerful concentration of people that can affect change in and of itself. And the leadership climate, um, without without getting political, is the leadership climate something from a philanthropic standpoint, something that is actually improving in, across the world? Is there more collaboration between mm -hmm. countries? How is that working now? Well, I think there's uh, there's a couple of really important uh, uh, 
trends that we're, we're trying to track. Uh, one of them is that uh, even before uh, the current administration in the United States, U.S. government funding was having a difficult time growing. And, um, and, and so I think we're in, a, in an age in which public sector funding for the Global Development Goals and for other key areas of support are just not going to be enough. Um, and so I think, I think it's not this administration, but more broadly we have to recognize there's a limitation mm -hmm. on public funds. In fact, in this past year, uh, U.S. government funding for developing countries was at 31 billion and private sector funding was at 44 billion. Oh my gosh. Yes. So we've now surpassed, and I think that's the second trend is that private sector and the role of business, of philanthropists, all forms of engagement is really essential to this fabulous framework, the Global Development Goals, and continue to make progress. So then as the, the government gradually steps away, Global Impact steps in. Well, hopefully uh, we're supporting the private sector and groups like Global Washington that really will step in. Well, Scott, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, and thank you for all that you do, Stan.